Okay, folks, um, if you do us a favor, keep your phones handy because we're going to need them later on. But if you turn them off now, that'll be good. Cheers, thank you. Okay, um, so uh, this presentation, as you can see, is about anti doping um, and all about anti doping. So, anti doping is a vast, vast topic, but I'm going to concentrate on one area of it this morning. And this is for coaches, athletes, and support personnel, so this is, for, this is work for everybody. So, just from my context, see why I have an interest in anti doping. Um, in 1987, the Children's Board came out, I was a tested athlete, so I was on a, a testing pool. I was competing at a level where I would have been tested um, at any event or for a number of years, not been able to wear and that kind of thing. So that, that's, that, that was my um, basically uh, introduction into anti doping there. That's, that's a little side. Um, then in 2010, leading up to Delhi Commonwealth Games, I was the each of the home nations and had their own uh, ambassador for, from UCAD, so it was myself from Northern Ireland. There was the captain of the female hockey team from England, there was a female swimmer from Wales, and there was Chris Hoy, who was from Scotland. So th that's when I really started to get interested then because of a wee bit of responsibility on me at, th at that stage and because of, 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 of what I've been asked to do. Um, from 2014 to date, I, I coached some of the Northern Ireland squad players. So that's why it's more important now to me as a coach because I need to understand uh, how, how they can remain clean and how they can uh, remain safe and anything that they're consuming. So which is probably, you guys can probably understand that out yourselves, right, the importance of that. And then uh, 2018, I was um, as one of the support personnel at the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games, and one of my roles was uh, anti-doping support for the coaches and the athletes. And I'm currently an um, educator at the UCAD, and I do a bit of work for children. So for, for your context, <coughs> um, this is really a timeline here going along. And if you look up on the left-hand side, you've got your influencers. So whenever somebody co comes or arrives to your club, um, they're beginners. And that's the influencers, they're their role models, it's their UCM Bolts, it's their footballers, it's their hockey players, their netball stars. That's probably one of the reasons, the main reasons why they join. And as it comes down to parent influence, teachers, coaches and peers. And as they move along the bottom, you can see at the performance development stage, that's whenever anti-doping and national government bodies start to play a part. And then as you go right along to the end of the elite, um, the players then and the athletes at that stage is the coaches, the most important. So you see the transition from how everything sort of moved. And the role models, well, we basically are the role models now, that's why the role models is there. So this, this is why it's important for you. So if you've got a performance athletes coming through, this is when you need to start thinking why this is important to you. Okay, so task one, um, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I was hoping for six, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna go for two ones and a two. And I've got a pack here. And what I want you to do is, um, if you can take one, please. If you can take one, please. And yourselves, they're going up to you. There's a number of items in there. And what I would like you to do is, in a second, is have a look through them. And this should be quite quick. You don't need to have a lot of deliberation about it. You should have a fair idea whether they're safe or whether they're unsafe or whether you're not sure. And what I would like you to do is turn them over and up the front here. So you've got a look around here now, if you like. We've got a safe table. We've got an unsure table, and we've got a not safe table. So if you want to have a quick go, guys, let me take a minute, have a quick look through them all, and put them where they should be. So, just go right on the table there, sir. So. Just go sort them out up there. Yeah, it's up. Safe to the parties, safe, safe, safe to the safe, unit. Sorry, yeah, yeah, really, sorry, really good question. Safe as in... Safe that you will not be tested positive. So, so something if you'll not be tested positive and you'll not get a ban. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah, good point. Thanks. Oh, that's totally different. That will probably be. So basically, if it's found in your system, over here means you have no chance of getting a ban, maybe you're not sure, and they're out. Okay, last few seconds, folks. Good, so last 10 seconds, you're not sure, there's a bit of a little. 
Okay, so we'll have a wee quick look here first, folks, before we move on. Um, up here we've got the, the really what, the ones that jump right at you. The injections, the hormones, the cocaine, the testosterone. Yeah, you've got all those and the marijuana, all the things. That, and actually you've all got the same idea of what is what you believe is not to be safe. Good job. So down the bottom here, we've got safe. <coughs> and these are things you probably buy in the shops. So you've got your Paul and Barrett, your local shop, you've got your protein bars, your drinks. Protein powders, uh, any different uh, multivitamins and energy drinks. And in the middle there, some of them aren't sure about those, which is good. So we've got a bit of a mix. Got a bit of a mix. So go on another quick set down for us, folks. Very good. Okay, so just to give you a wee, a wee bit of context of what um, anti doping is, so we've done that bit of an exercise and we know where we are. So a bit of a context of what, of what anti doping is. So, um, in Canada there in Montreal, that's the headquarters of WADA, which is the World Anti Doping Agency. And what they do every year is they write a code. So they write the code, it's published every January. And the fact that the books of it are released every September to give people a couple of months to comply. So maybe stop using something or start start to record things a different way. And there's different books. You do testing, you do your labs, you have your uh, prohibited list and so on. Okay, so that comes out, that comes into force first of January every year. And then we've got ourselves up here, so that's us up on the map there. And um, we're slightly different here because we have got we can affiliate to the British side or we can affiliate to the Irish side. So if you're a sport affiliate to um, Ireland, which would be your, your netball, then you would affiliate to the Irish Sports Council and they would be testing you on the programme. If you're a sport which involved football in the north, you'd be affiliating to uh, GB and you're, you'd be governed by them. However, if you whatever country you play sport in, competitively. So if you go to another country for a match, you'll be tested by them, but they all follow the exact same rules because the previous slide was spoke about uh, the code and the way things should be done. Is that okay? Okay. So 1% gains, and um, Dale Bradsford, one of the, one of the most um, prolific uh, Olympic coaches, we're always striving for improvement for those 1% gains in absolutely everything we do. So 1%, 2%, but he calls them 1%, so percentage gains. So the little bits that add together to put together performance or to put, put together a package of an athlete, okay? So what I want us to do now is jump up off your seats again, please, and just go to this table. And what we we'll have here, uh, 10 and a wee bit of sticky H, and just one word, just fire them out, shot them, throw, put them all out, and put them down on that bit of paper for us. So anything that you think is important for an athlete, to help an athlete, uh, to perform or help an athlete to prepare to perform. So we're going to have about a minute or so again, folks. Just nice and quick, throw them down. It might be simple things like training. It could be rest. Those so type of things. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, any, anything that you think is important. Anything you think is important for you as a coach or when you are an athlete. What was important to you? So just fire them down. One word. So we don't want big sentences. Just fire them straight out. Keep firing them. Keep firing them all. Yes, yeah, stick them on. Yes. Yeah. As many as you can. Don't worry if you're doubling up with someone else. It's what you think. Excellent. So we've got another 30 seconds, we're halfway there. And about another 15. Sleep, excellent. Last 10. I'm going to bring all those tents down. Stop watching, show the. Yeah, 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 I was trying to find it. Stick it on, trying to find it. Perfect, good job. Okay, so can we sit down back down again? I'll have a quick look at this. What we have here is you're hitting everything. Some is a double hop, which is good. So you're all sort of signing off the same thing, sheet. So we've got sleep, we've got coaching, we've got nutrition. Diet, proper bed, yeah, rest, um, see training, medical backup, uh, funds, yeah, big thing of funds, coaching, nutrition, training plans, and dedication. So, brilliant. Okay, so I have a wee slide here, which is giving examples as well. It's not a definitive list, 
these things are always changing. And nothing's wrong with it. Works for you, works for your coach. It's not going to be wrong. So, um, here we've got diet, which we have. We have training, we have a medical backup for physiotherapy, we have rest, we have sleep, hydration, psychology, all those things, all those things. The one thing that none of you's put down, none of you's put down on this, okay, is supplements. How many people in your club would use supplements? Okay, you see them with their shakes, you see them with their tablets, you see them with their gels. It's a massive, massive part of what people see, and it's all to do with marketing. It's all marketing, because basically what a supplement is, supplement is something that's supplementing through your diet. So, and it's a lot of laziness. It's laziness in marketing. So, if you want more protein, eat a chicken breast. Now, I'm gonna have this shake that you saw of the boy TV drinking. Or uh, being a bit, being a bit off here, needs more vitamin C. I'll go and get a multivitamin. But you know, go and get an orange and eat it. You know, simple stuff. So supplementing through your, that's all to do with market, all to do with market. And the, the problem is, oh, <clears throat> the problem is people don't give it enough. Okay. So next week, quick task is just you just need to stay seated there. And the next task is stand up. If you or one of your athletes keep supply, use, or possess a supplement which may result in a positive drugs test. So a positive drugs test is going to be a ban. Okay, so be, it's in your system, it's going to be a, probably up to a four year ban. So stand up if you think that you, there's a possibility that you keep, supply, use, or possess, or some of your athletes do. Good, good answer, good answer. Okay, right, so stand up now. If any of you or any of your athletes do you know of use protein powders? Stand up. Good job. Okay. None of your boys? Good boys, are they? Uh, too young. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, this is the time to get them in. This is the time to start doing this. Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, vitamins, vitamin tablets. Vitamin tablets, you do. You st no, stay stand. No, no, you're not out of the woods. You stay stand. Okay. Put a hand up if you use vitamin tablets while you're standing. Okay. Gels. Anybody use gels? Your hands, good. You'll start getting fingers here, nice. Okay. okay. Uh, sports drinks, herbal remedies, green tea, all those type of things. Oh, yeah. Tea. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Fat or waste loss supplements, uh, minerals like zinc, all those iron, all those type of things. Um, so start counting your head how many of these actually apply to you. And this is not a definitive list. Protein bars, sports bars, fish oils, omega. And believe it or not, folks, if you want to waste it down now, so count the money you had there. Who had more than one, two, three, four, five? Okay. Think about supplements are, folks. 50% of all bands of athletes around the world are attributed to the use of supplements. Not the testosterone injections, not the EPO, but supplements, the uses of supplements, and not being able to stay safe. That's frightening, isn't it? It's really, really frightening. So the supplement message, no guarantee can be given that any supplement, including vitamins and minerals and herbal remedies, are free from banned substances. Anybody any reason why, why that might be? Any, any thoughts on it? Yeah. Minimal amount of Exactly. Exactly. Anything else? Some of the ingredients with? Is this are they so strict to kind of make it uh, such a, a level playing field to like? Well, so there, it's no. It's the, the thing about the supplements are. Yes, yeah, the supplements. It's you've got what's in it. And how it's manufactured. Okay, so if you're using a food product, if you're in a food product and you are buying something in the shops and Tesco's and you look at the ingredients, well, that's what has to be in it. Or all hell breaks loose. Look at what happened about five, ten years ago when they found a bit of horse. And yeah. can you imagine, you remember what happened? Okay. Yeah. Or um, if you're using uh, if you're, uh, any kind of tablets, any kind of uh, medication, you go into a factory and they go into a room like this and they maybe run out. Thousand bottles, and then they're all taken out, taken away. They're given a batch number because that was the batch that was just made, and the rooms very strictly cleaned down, disinfected, checked, rechecked, everything. Supplements, you could have one type of supplement being made here in this room now, and a second type of supplement being made here right now. So it's the cross contamination. The other thing is what's on are the ingredients in the supplement doesn't state everything, just what they want to put on. They don't have the same rules attributed to them. It's not governed by, by government or by law. It's it's a manufacturing, okay? It's, it's not the same. So they don't have the same strict guidelines that they must follow. And that's why 
a lot of things that people are consuming, they're not aware that they're consuming. Yeah, it's a very good thing, isn't it? Very, very good thing. So what you then have to think about is, does the need outweigh the risk? Okay, so does your need to have a protein shake outweigh the risk of you getting a four year ban? Okay. So, Alan Beans, anybody heard of Alan Beans? You've heard of him, yeah, you've seen this before, yeah. Oh, you haven't seen it before, you haven't seen it? Well, heard the story. You've heard the story, yeah. Guys, this is a really powerful story. It lasts about two months, it's worth your I'm gonna let you listen to it right through to the end. Uh, bit of background, Alan was a rugby player, international rugby player for England junior team. And this is him talking, and this is his dad talking. They're not actors, okay? So just take a minute and listen to this. Uh, I started playing rugby when I was eight years old. Um, I started playing at uh, Chester Rugby Club, which is my local club. By the time I was about 12, uh, people started realising that I had an interest in rugby and that I was actually quite good at, at rugby and um, like I say that's when I really fell in love with it when I was about 12 years old. Um, played it week in week out, just loved it and um, yeah never ever thought I'd, I'd get selected for England. Uh, always wanted to, never thought I actually would. Um, but uh, yeah I did, got selected for England, uh, represented England on four occasions. Um, fantastic. Just, it was fantastic. Um, best time of my life, one really was the best time of my life. Until um, I got drugs test results back, obviously. Um, broke my heart, man. Just absolutely annihilated me. Um, uh, it was, you know, shot a complete bolt out of the blue. Uh, and it was pretty earth shattering. The only way I can explain it is like it's like almost having a death in the family. Um, you know, even now I struggle with it. I got tested for a anabolic steroid called nineteen or androstrone. It's a it's it's just an anabolic steroid um, can be taken orally or obviously through an injection. After being tested positive and I knew that I was then had this substance inside my body. Uh, from then on I was obviously um, I wanted to know how it got in there so I did my own research into finding uh, uh, all the ways it can get into your system, all the products that may contain it, um, whether your body can produce it naturally anyway. All the, re all the research I was doing all, all sort of led back to this one product um, that does not display on it that it contains a a banned substance or anything, but it, it all just led back to this one, this one um, supplement I was taking. Right, Everyone was taking supplements, and, and I just thought they were okay. I didn't, I didn't realise. Um, Having no education of, on on uh, anti doping or, or, or drugs, really. All my friends was on it. But everyone at the gym was taking it. You could buy it over the counter. So I mean, he just he didn't, he didn't think. You know, I should go and get this, you know, chemically tested at a lab for any banned substance, and off I went, just totally uneducated. And, and in a way, I feel responsible <coughs> because Adam was taking, um, but you know, protein supplements, if you like, and and I just let it happen because I didn't really, I didn't know, I didn't think to check. Um, I think the first bit of drug awareness I ever got told was. I think it was the weekend before the drugs test saying there was going to be drugs tests and that was about, that's it. That's all I've ever been given really. I wouldn't wish it on anybody uh, and I felt it was like you were, you were on a murder charge and um, when you face three barristers um, on, a, on a hearing it's quite daunting for a young kid and even for a parent that's never, never done anything wrong in his life, never been to court. Um, you, know, you, know, you try to lead a decent life, don't you? I never knowingly took any banned substance. Never. Scary thought, isn't it? What do you think about that? Yeah, it's kind of scary, yeah. Uh, hard for a young fellow there who obviously uh, getting there and they seem to want to be clean. Yeah. You know, yes. so to, to go through that. Talk, I'm, so like, what the worst thing which is you're saying, young enough? 
Give another face bang over here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Suggest that on him and also the parents, mm-hmm. like such a big life change for them both. Yeah. And but it's not even that they weren't even told that it was in there. Just so kind of selfish from the manufacturers. Yep. Well, they would. They obviously would care about that. But it's actually affected. Well, life could you imagine this yourselves as coaches how how you would feel because you're normally seeing them taking them in the change rooms, taking them afterwards, yeah. taking them before, and you you assume. You assume. He did before when he had some of those kick cameras on like, mm-hmm. like, he, he, like he had to research it himself to find out where it came from. Where it came from. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but the the thing about the two year ban, see, ban from sport. So he was found to be um, have positive substance in his body through rugby, but he's banned from every sport. So it's not like he can go right. We're banned for two years from rugby. I'll go and play for the local football team. No, you can't. You're banned. You can't even train the local football team. One of your birds gets banned from netball. Well, they can't go and start even training in basketball. You're banned from all sport. Is that at a professional level or all that's that, Once you're banned, that was yeah. w- once you receive a sanction. That's that is enforced along every sport that that yeah. that's, that's signs up to run. It's well so that's yeah, yeah. Right. And um, the other thing is if you're a coach and you allow someone to come and train in your club, knowing that they are bad, you can then receive the ban. Okay. So it's it has that knock on it has that knock on effect. So task three, searching for supplements within within informed sports. If you get your phones out now, please. And if you just go into Google and look for informed sport, it should be the second one down. It should be the second one down. Real quick, yeah. Okay, so if you go into informed sport, there's no one about the second one down. Yep, just open it up. Okay. So you should come up with, with um, this screen here. So if you just go to the top and look at the screen there, and if you can't pick it up, just look at the person beside you. Just top. So if you go to find a product, we're, we're going to run through how to actually search for a product here. Okay. And Inform Sport, Inform Sport are a company, a private company. And if you're making, uh, if you are making any kind of a supplement, you send a batch to them. Okay. You, you send them a batch, and they test it. Okay. And they test it. So what we'll do is. Go in to find your product in the top left and search for, see there, Connecticut 100% creatine. So just type in that, Connecticut 100% creatine. Okay, and search and you should come up with this. You got it? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So there we are. Now, here we are. So we're all on this page now at the minute. And what this has done, this has searched the product, the, the product name that you're looking for. But what you then want to do is you want to look for the batch number, the batch number that's on the drum or on the packet or on the foil. And your batch number will be here, your batch ID. Because what that says is that that batch number has been tested with a batch, batch expiration of the 31st of August. Then you've got a different batch number here. So if your batch number doesn't appear, then your batch hasn't been tested. Okay. Now, um, companies who use Inform Sport are allowed to use their watermark, and that watermark will appear on the brand. But there has been times when companies have just thrown it on anyway. Okay. And that's that's a that's that's a copyright issue between them and someone else. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's been tested. But the worrying thing about these guys are, and it's not a case you would go along and say, right, can you test that for me? Test it and just make sure it's clean. You'd go, right, how much does it cost to get five things tested? How much does it cost to get 10 parts tested? I don't know, 10,000 pounds, how much does it cost for five, five things? Just test for those five. Okay, so they're not testing for everything. They're just testing for the ones which you have paid them to test for. Okay, so there's no list of what they've actually tested for. You've tested for something, but not everything. Yep. So if if it's been tested, it comes up on there, but it could still be banned if it's been correct. Tested. Yeah. Oh, okay. Correct. Yeah. It's scary, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll move on to the next bit. I was reading down through the website. If we look at this here on the, on the first page, you don't need to go back to it, but yeah. if you look here for a message to ensure certified products are safer for athletes, we test every single batch for banned substances before being released to market. Now, look at that word 
we're going to use that. Safe earth. So it's not safe. It's safe earth. So that's their get it clause. So you, you can't go, hold on a second. You go, no, 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 no. It's the front page of the website. So it starts to be even more worrying, doesn't it? It starts to be more worrying. So on informed sport does, informed sport, it's risk and minimization. Okay? Not all banned substances are tested for it on specific products only, not the whole brand. All right. So the other thing that will that may help you in your in your case, if you've test, if you've checked for something, so say you've got your batch number as I had earlier on, you could print out the report that you that you and you stick it in your bag. Uh, you have a test in three weeks time for your athlete and they fail. Worst case scenario fails. So it happens out. If you go say, look, I think it came from this, and look, look what I've done. I, I tried to make sure this is clean, I thought this was clean. Well, if the ban is a two to four year ban, you might only get a two or a three, but you're still getting banned. You're still, or it might still be the four, but it might help you when you're trying to defend your case. So always keep records of anything that you've checked. Okay, so no guarantee can be given that any supplement, including vitamins and minerals and herbal remedies are free from banned substances. Scary, isn't it? What are you gonna do with those things? You're let your kids take. Yeah. Um, and the strict code of liability is athletes are solely responsible for any prohibited substance by their system, despite whether it was their intention to cheat or not. Okay, because you hear these people going, it's not fair, I drank out of their bottle when I was thirsty. Well, that's, you put that in the ear. So, and do you know what? Most people here are caught, um, they get a ban, it's some kind of a story. You know, so that if it's in your system, it's in your system. You can't say, well, it's okay for him to drink his friend's bottle. You know, it's, you can't, it's, it's me. Okay, so if we come up now, we'll have a look at these other things that you decided were safe, and the things that you decided were unsure. Can we use informed? Um, <laughs> have a think where they should be, and put them in there. I'm definitely not sure at all. <laughs> so based on... So, so basically, no, no supplement or sports drink can be guaranteed. Where should they all be? Where should they all be? Sports drinks, protein bars, health remedies, teas. Yeah. Wow. just being unsure of what's safe and not safe. Is that scary? Oh, you quick sit down again. So is this tea or nothing? Oh, like <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> what's that? With like a diet coke. No, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, what can you even do? Is the more even safe? Okay, so just just for the last moment, I just want you to think about something. So, um, think of someone in your own sport. It could be or a different sport, uh, male team, female team, individual sports. Someone who's a real, real hero of yours. Someone's a real, real hero. It could be a coach. It could be an athlete. It could be someone else. Just close your eyes. Um, I want you to think about that person. So everybody, close their eyes. So think about who that is. And you're watching them winning, scoring their goals, scoring their points, hitting their times, breaking world records. And just visualize, visualize them doing that. And they're up in lights and they're in front of the cameras, back page of the papers, one of your athletes. And they're up getting their medals around their necks, they're lifting their trophies. Do you want to think about Trisha? Yeah. You do? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Good, good one. Okay. Do you want to think it of? Yourself. Yourself? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. No, I just think it on. Yeah, I've done. Okay. No, I'm thinking of uh, Martinez, like an Argentinian player. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And then? Zinedine Zidane. Zinedine Zidane. Okay, so all really big players, really, really big players. Now, think about that. I think you just opened up the paper the next day. And they're your hero, and what they've done, and they've just been found in the band, so I've got a band. How would you feel then? Cheap? How, how do you, you, you would feel cheated? You, you'd probably think, actually, yeah, like, that it's actually really, really bad, but it yeah. could have even just been for a tiny thing. Yeah. Like uh, anyone would be like, oh, he's, he's a fraud, mm -hmm. really bad doing this, but he might have just been with some protein still But you don't know that? You yeah, don't know exactly, that? Exactly. What would you, how would you think? Uh, I suppose I had that. 
no, no, wait. The number goes for Christ, right? Yeah, that's it's right. I came from Ginseng. Ginseng tea, oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. regardless, you were that Christ. It's a blemish. Yeah, that's right, blemish the grave. You're that. No, and it just. And then, as a, and then when he started out. And then when he was on the senior circuit, he actually got yeah. the anabolic steroids down the system. Yeah. 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 He started, you know, regardless of what it is, you doubt how they achieve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So but, but, but could you imagine yourselves even if you look back to Adam and Dean there as well you've, you've got players under your uh, charge you're like you know they're, they're under you and you've got a big, big arms around and the finger could be pointed at you too mm -hmm. what, what club are they in? what club are they in? that's once and that's, that's twice that's happened in that club yeah. you know, or whatever you know? see I saw it being because it was on the court there recently that the guys have got energy bars uh -huh. and it's just important that so I'm starting to worry about that message. Yes, yeah, exactly. Well, there's a bunch of people got to go through. You know, is, is it a parent who isn't informed? Mm -hmm. They maybe just go down looking for the, the, the buzzwords. Yeah, but, not come out but, but with kids, what, how, what's the best way kids can get energy? Mm -hmm. I mean, they need to be eating sugar, mm -hmm. so it should be bars and chocolate. You know, there's better ways through that. Mm -hmm. um, any questions? Anything at all? Way back, uh, way back when, how many years ago, when uh, Mr. Williams came to school World Competitions, and was pull out the men and athletes for Mr. Joe Smith. And yeah. our, our joke with him in management was always, my men can't even afford an antibiotic to make their minds. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. So the, <coughs> the, the program, know, yeah. But the, always down the line, like the, the, the players are in their, in their bags all the time trying to get the, the gels the and the gels things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Back, so that's the thing. Yeah. And the other issue is if you as a club or you as a person supply them mm -hmm. with something to get back, you're a supplier, you get four years. So what, what would your advice be, you know, how do you deal with that as a coach with, say, like a young team who are running, like a, a snack? Yeah. Do you go to the extent of, let me, let me see what you're eating? Yeah, yeah, just a, a bit of education, bring, bring someone in, give them a bit of education. Yeah. And uh, just, just talk to them and educate them from a young age. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other part Nutritionists, mm -hmm. yeah. Because the, the thing is, if, if you're seeing it, and you're aware that they're eating these type of things, you don't do anything about it, you know, it, it is kind of your responsibility. People are responsible. They like safeguard us like everything else. You, know, you have a lot of, you do want a lot of that. And it's, it's more of just how you fund it. Uh, the thing with Jessica Meyer was a member of the very society for athletes, and she comes on and every lunchtime she's pulling out uh, one of those protein bars, mm -hmm. and you're standing there, not from that, and I turn up and take that. And I'm just like, have an egg sandwich. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only thing about it is they're so expensive. Mm -hmm. There's no way you really want to say to people that have money yeah. to make. Yeah. Well, I think that's time. I'll have a talk at any stage. Right. Is, is there mm. any kind of products which that, that they are safe? And like, because I'm thinking like in football, some of the messages don't take them really. Don't, I'm thinking not don't gels, gels, like gels, like you know, like where you're at before they only way to get 100 safe. Yeah. 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 Only 100 percent safe is to don't consume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's funny to see how often though, like professional players, especially clubs, every player before they go on will squeeze like a Nucleus gel in mouth. Yeah, and it's just crazy to think that the sponsorship, yeah, the players probably don't even, the coaches, no one in the club probably knows officially what's in there. There's a new about research. We'll leave it there for the things. Is that okay, Robin? Understand? There's a new about research.